Pick up your gear and open your chests. Throw on your armor and head out on a quest. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. On the Sword Coast, the allies will help with blades and bows and magic as well. Hey, hey, heroes on their way. Fighting forever against overwhelming odds. Fighting together in favor of multiple gods. Idol champions of the forgotten realms. Idol champions, adventure never ends. Idol champions, get you all out there. Idol champions, you will say it again. Idol champions. From water deep to ice and air, head out the show, all shadow fell, hey, hey. Together we stay. Walk to the monsters, walk to the boss, walk to the right, it's never a loss, hey, hey. Bad guys can slay. Fighting forever against overwhelming odds. Fighting together in favor of multiple gods. I don't champions of the forgotten realms. I don't champions if that you never realms. I don't champions that you all out there. I don't champions you will say it again. I don't champions. No, I'm not muted. Sorry. It's just, it's gotta be a joke. Cause come on, I'm muted so often when I start this stream. Uh, <laughs> I, I made sure everything was working this time. Uh, welcome folks. It's Saturday and that means it's time for Garwar's guide, the tutorial show. I'm, I'm Garwar. If you haven't figured that out yet. Uh, and with me today is Gabe in the production booth. I want to say as always, but, you know, occasionally Gabe hasn't been here. And that's fine. That's fine. Uh, but Gabe is back. Gabe is here. Gabe's going to be grabbing questions from chat. Uh, as long as you put question colon, like it says down there. Look, all the way down there. In the white box. Uh, question colon in front of your question, then Gabe will grab it and put it over here for me. Because on this show, I talk on the topic for about an hour. And then I address questions and comments from chat uh, in the second hour. In the second hour. Uh, so yeah, do that. Today's topic is, is expansive. So, you know, we're going to get in as much as we can into it. Uh, it's a brand new system that just arrived to the game. It's the new collection system. So it was a it was a very limited thing that there just wasn't much going on before, and now there's a lot. And so we're going to explore it today uh, and talk about some of the things to you know to focus on and and you know where it's at right now and where it's going in the future, which is probably a good disclaimer to start with here in a moment. But yeah, so we're going to talk about the collections uh, and the guide quests that came with them. And the guide quest, quest that came with them. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, as always, you know, uh, questions on this topic will be uh, will be answered first, and then you know anything else. We can talk about anything else you want during the Q and A. Uh, you can ask those questions at any time. I will get to them. I swear. Uh, but please, disclaimer: I am not a developer at Codename Entertainment. Uh, I, am, am, I am contracted just to come and, and answer questions and do streams like this one and GG2E on Thursday, uh, because I have been playing this game for six and a half years and I have been making guides for this game 
for six and a half years, <laughs> basically, um, starting with the second ever event in Idle Champions. That was when I made my first guide, and boy, was it a hot mess. But hey, we've come a long way. <laughs> Uh, so you can find, uh, 170 or more of my guides over on the subreddit. Uh, so yeah, so I, so I, I answer your questions. So if you have, um, if you have questions for the developers, those are best asked on like, uh, uh dev insights on Thursdays. Uh, but you know, maybe, maybe I've heard an answer already. Who knows? And I can share it. Uh, but yeah. All right, uh, so I am on, this is probably confusing some people, but uh, I'm on a, not my main account at the moment. I do have my main account open. We'll, we'll get into both of them when it comes to this system, but uh, this is my brand new account that I just started. This is my new player run. Uh, I've been playing it live on stream, like fully live on stream. Uh, uh, and I thought this was a good place to start our conversation about collections and guide quests. Um, I, 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 I guess I do want to put a disclaimer here. Um, this is a brand new system to the game. I mean, I, they call it a rework, but man, it's not, I, they undersold that they shouldn't, I feel like they should have just, they shouldn't have called it a rework because the collections was never like this, right? The collection screen, if you had it in your game was never like this. This is an entirely new, complete system with stats about all kinds of things and representing all kinds of things that have just never been in the game before as such with a massive undertaking like this, uh, not everything, even at this stage, not everything is working right. We just had a patch, uh, yesterday. And while I'm that, that fixed some issues while I'm not a fan of Friday afternoon patches, um, I am a fan of, of quickly addressing issues and and so I think they're going to they're going to continue to iterate on this system. Uh the goal uh for those who do, who don't know is to make it so that in this collection system with the content that is currently in the game you will be able to uh, get all the bars to 100%. Um there won't be anything that's like well wait till the future. That is their goal. And then as they add new content, then they'll expand. Um, so you can get to 100% again, right? Um, yeah. So just understand that this is still a work in progress. Um, it is out. It is getting lots of feedback. And they are, they are hearing that feedback. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is honestly, this is probably the biggest, uh, like, system added to the game since, in my opinion, since offline progress, like the most potentially impactful to the future of the game since offline progress. Uh, and we all know if you were around for that, we all know that that went through some rough times. Hopefully this is a little smoother. <laughs> all right. So here's the most wonderful, one of the most wonderful things about the new system. It's got a button right on the campaign map screen, folks. Boom. Oh, it's so pretty. I like it. Uh, so this is the collection screen now, uh, for those who, who haven't accessed it, um, you can access it in a run, uh, through the info menu, but you'll need to actually click on the info button and then, uh, and then move your cursor down and then click on collections. It's a little not intuitive. It feels like from inside a run, but this is great. Uh, I'm going to address this real quick. Drudge, uh, no, this is collections is for everyone. Collections is for everyone. So, um, this will be a, this is a system that is, if it's not already, it should, was supposed, I thought it was supposed to be out for everybody. Um, so yeah, switch is no longer supported. Uh, they sunset the switch. So if you're on the switch, switch to something else, please. Um, I recommend uh, Steam or Epic. Uh, uh, yeah, but yeah, so this is going to everywhere. This is going everywhere, and I, and they made some. Just they just made. I know it's on consoles because they just made some adjustments uh, in the patch notes. So, uh, so as you can see, there's a lot of things going on here. Um, obviously, the total collections completed is that bar that, like, if you're a completionist, you're now going, 
oh, or oh my God, like uh, one way or the other. It's either very happy or very sad because you're either, you're either excited by it or you're like, oh my God, there's so much left to go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, there's a little premium progress toggle up here. And what this means, if you hover over it, it's like, uh, are, are you a free, are you, are you trying to just free to play a hundred percent? Like all the stuff that, that you don't have to pay for, or are you like the mega completionist where you want to own everything as well as complete everything? They give you that option. So if you want to be, if you want to like, uh, you know, uh, mega support the game and whale and buy all the stuff then, and, and track all of that, you can turn this on. Otherwise you can just turn it off. And not worry about it. I like that there's an option there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the big, the big thing that's big and shiny and shiny and bright is this guide and collection quests. Uh, we're gonna dig into that here in a second because that, I mean, that deserves a lot of time just on its own. But as you can see, there are already things even on my brand new account that are unlocked, and others that are locked. Uh, you know, some things obviously you get in right away. Like your campaigns, you start out in Sword Coast, right? And you have some champions. And then you start earning equipment and getting a familiar. I love that Boo is the icon here. <laughs> you start earning achievements and unlocking feats and defeating enemies, right? These are all the things that are going on. Modron Cores is interesting. This one might be a little confusing. We'll talk about that in a second. Like, why is there progress here on a new account? Uh, and blessings, right? But then other things, like, I haven't... I haven't haven't earned any skins yet and it's and this is a free-to-play playthrough for me on this account and this is my ultimate account over on epic um so this hasn't unlocked yet and you can't even click on it right uh, i haven't done a time gate yet so there's nothing for it to track over here and i haven't unlocked any patrons yet so these things kind of gray themselves out and and you know and leave you know because yeah they just do apparently currently um and everything else is just as you earn it, it's going to track. Uh, and then the guide and collection quests are, are meant to um, do what it says, guide you through the game as well as like uh, help you, uh, you know, flesh out your collections, I guess. Uh, they're a little, they, you know, it's it's a start. They, they've got a start here. Um, it needs some progress for that. Let's dive into campaigns real quick. So uh, if you hop into a campaign, you can see uh, as on a brand, my brand new account, I've dabbled in the Grand Tour of the Sword Coast. I've unlocked access to Tomb of Annihilation yet, but I know better than to go there at the moment. <laughs> um, but everything else is still locked, right? So as you progress, you're going to be able to see this and you'll get these cool little, uh, little circles that'll fill up with your overall progress. Uh, which again, either encouraging or discouraging, like, uh, overall base adventures completed four out of 168. I don't know. That's a lot. It's nice to see these numbers finally, uh, fully somewhere trackable. The number of total variants in the game currently 391. This is, this is cool information. Uh, if you don't want to have to add stuff up, uh, currently eight campaigns, uh, that, that exist. Um, there will be a ninth added this year. Because they add one a year, um, looking forward to that. As it shows up, it'll 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 pop down in here. Uh, but now that I've you know I can't click on these, but I can click on Grand Tour of the Sword Coast, and then it gets real detailed. I mean, they get real. I didn't. I was not expecting this kind of detail from this system. It explains why it took so long to get here. Um, it's gonna it's gonna give you these nice little nice little check marks about what's going on, and then it's like question mark what's next oh my god and then it even shows you Ooh, you can unlock a champion right special campaign rewards putting stuff up here is neat so you know what's coming and then you can scroll down to try to find it all right uh but we got to get there we got to get there first uh they have for the first time ever in game you can go to an adventure uh once you've completed you can see the enemies You've unlocked a bestiary, right? Um, you can click on it; it'll animate them, which is a little. It was a little interesting. I was like, "What?" Uh, but you can see what kind of their idle motion is. Uh, you know, when you get there, which is interesting. Uh, and and as you as you kind of collect these uh, unlocks, um, it's going to unlock over in if we go all the way back out in the enemies area, right? There's a full list of enemies from all, all that you've unlocked. 
So I've got 144 enemies that I've encountered so far. It's got to load in all the graphics now. 144 I've encountered so far. Uh, out of a potential 1,931. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, but we've never had those before. Oh, I got I left before I wanted to show something. It actually tells you now. You can go in and look, and you can find where Where do I find melee, no, like, gnolls? Oh, look, Brief Tour of the Realms, Curse Farmer, Unearth Evil. Like, it tells me where I've encountered them so far, and it will continue that. Um, we have certain filter options. A lot of certain filter options. Um... This is one of those. <laughs> this is one of those systems. It's like, mm, is it deep enough? Like it starts. Like there's bosses, non-bosses, static stuff. Cool, cool. Uh, damage types, melee and range. Does all they they count? I guess currently. Okay. Armored or unarmored. Hits based. That's important as well. Any. Okay. Uh, unencount. Okay, and then some tags. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's cool. So tags are, are neat, so you can find stuff as well. Awesome. All right, and then you can just reset your sort if you want, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so if, if you're trying to filter and find certain things, this is now a very deep system. Um, I want to say with those tags, if there is a filter you are looking for that is not there, let them know. Let them know. This is... You know, they are, I, I know on Dev Insights on Thursday, they already, people were already like, we could use a filter for this and for this. And they were like, yeah, I don't see why we can't do that. And just didn't make it into all of this. There was a lot going on here. Uh, and if they miss some filters, you yeah, know, just ask for All right, uh, back to campaigns. So uh, we can track our campaign progress. You can also access a new version of the journal uh, that you can read at any time. Before, uh, you could only ever read the journal, like the story, when you were in that adventure. And now uh, you can go read it uh, after you unlock it. As, as you unlock each of the stories, you can just go read them out of here. Uh, it's also going to track your progress on any variants uh, that, are, that are off of those main adventures. It's nice little green check marks. Um, I'll tell you right now, this is a bug. This, is, <laughs> this used to be a thing. Uh, but only half the time, uh, they did a B testing on a second tutorial. Like it was a variant for the tutorial. Uh, don't worry if you don't have it, they will, they will remove this. So again, they're, they're cleaning all this up so that truly, uh, you will be to, able to complete everything. Uh, a special note here on sword coast. There is a circle with a line through it here. It's because they never released these variants. Uh, I've, I've shamed them about it publicly on a couple occasions and, um, they do need to go back. They do need to go back and add those in at some point and make them. I don't think they ever finished making them. Uh, yeah. So there's, there's a lot of cool stuff and you can kind of look ahead like, Oh, look what, what's going to be, I've got unlocked access here. What's over here Two evergreen champions, Azaka and dragon bait. Uh, you know, I would like to be able to click on this and go to character info. We don't have that yet. Uh, but yeah, everything's got filters. Everything's got sorting. Uh, you can see what champions you have. This is all the, the other collection used to just be champions in their gear and their average item level. Uh, and now we get this fairly beautiful interface that lets you track a bunch of inf information. I can go straight to the greatest dwarven king over here, the leader of the companions of the hall, Bruner Battlehammer. I can see, uh, you know, my gear that I have so far, I can see like how much, my, what my average equipment is, the highest level I've ever upgraded him to, and his average item level, which is zero because it's brand new. Uh, feats that are available and unlocked over here, and you can even, uh, oh, no, you can hover over them to get more information. The skins are clickable, and they show up over here, so you can see what they animate like, which is great. I love it. This is the default skin. I think everybody understands. Pirate. Pirate Bruner is default Bruner. Um, yeah. So you, you get to see what they all look like before, you know, deciding if you want to buy them or hunting down the ability to unlock them. Uh, yeah. And then you have all of the champions that, that you don't have. You can see down here. Uh, you just can't click on them. Can't click on them. Oh, wow. That's decided to scroll for me. Uh, lots of sorting options, right? 
Uh, I think the key here is lots of ways to filter, lots of ways to sort, tons of access to all kinds of information that we've always wanted. Um, again, on a new player account, we're not going to see a whole lot, but I wanted to show you this is this is kind of the for a lot of players. This is what they're coming in at. Uh, here's the equipment collection. This used this is actually what the collection used to be. It was just equipment and not in as nice a, a view as this. Not in as nice a view as this. Uh, you'll note, uh, for those of you who are high level, you'll note, wait, where are legendaries? Well, legendaries aren't a piece of equipment. They're not even a rarity, even though they present as one. They are an effect that gets added on. It does let you, it does track, uh, like your highest legendary level and total le legendary levels up here. Um, but it doesn't show them down here because, because they're not a rarity, right? Uh, yeah. So you can scroll through now and, and see all your gear check and see if you've collected them all or not uh feats now you can just straight up people were always like can we just get feats on one place in one place where we can see them all and yeah they're like okay sure uh they added this in there's there's a lot of them there's a lot this game's been out for six and a half years there's a lot of stuff all the uh, wonderful familiars look i can click on them i can see them animated even when i don't own them that's that's fantastic that's fantastic. It also tells you roughly where they're from. Like, oh, you can only find some of these in Wild Offers now. Some of these you are, are, it says premium, but it doesn't tell me where that is. Some will say, uh, if I remember correctly, some should actually show up in the... Yeah, these are actually purchasable, purchasable. So I'm not sure what the premium ones are really supposed to mean, but if you click on it, it'll take you straight to that pack and and then and then leave you there apparently that that wasn't great that's not a great feeling uh it's <laughs> the first time i'd done that uh but down here on modron cores uh it's not just your modron cores it's also tracking your parties unlocked which is why i have progress uh but it'll show you all of the potential modron cores uh that are currently available in the game and how to get them these are wild offer only uh one of these this one should should show is like gem shop i feel like they need that icon uh because some are only available for oh wait one of those actually is wrong one of those isn't wild offer one of these is gems hmm. so yeah some some small problems right that they're still working on and then blessings if you just want to see an overview of blessings instead of going to the blessings page and scrolling through you can see how much how much favor have I gotten? How many of the blessings have I achieved, right? Everything is is being tracked. Uh, I think there were can't remember if there were any that they uh, any things in the main page here they were like, we probably should add that. but there might I think they were talking about adding you know more uh, things internally for tracking for some of these topics. Um, so again, if you, if there's things that, uh, that, you know, you feel they've missed, please uh, submit feedback because now is, now is the best time, right? While they're, while they're actively iterating on the system, let's click on guide and collection quests over here, uh, from a new player perspective before we tab over to my other account so we can see kind of what you're working on, uh, and stuff. This is a kind of a big new addition uh is the idea of basically progress quests right uh and progress based uh progress based quests and progress based rewards um again this is kind of first iteration on it uh so they have three they've decided that there are three different types of quests there's a guide quest there's a collection there's a shiny collection quest and then a collection quest um yeah so complete these quests to unlock new features such as patrons uh, I feel like they could have kept going with examples here. Uh, it's also going to unlock, uh, or, or lead you. These are, these are the guide ones. These are guiding you towards unlocking your patrons. They're guiding you towards unlocking, uh, evergreen champions. Uh, they're guiding you towards just unlocking champions in general, like open a time gate. That's just like, Hey, this is a way to get, uh, to get more champions, like maybe this isn't this one probably didn't need to be some of the some of the decisions on what type of quest these are maybe weren't the best we'll see again first iteration um but and and uh, but right now i'm just gonna i'm gonna assume to be real um they're not really guiding you very well so take these with a grain of salt um these are not presented in any kind of order 
Uh, in fact, this, you know, because this should not be the first thing that you're looking at going, oh, is that the priority? And no, no, it is not. <laughs> so uh, there, there's, there's plans for this to filter uh, by, by kind of the rate of completion. So uh, the stuff that's easiest to complete at the top and the stuff uh, that's harder to complete at the bottom, which should give you kind of a sort of how quick it is to progress. Um, uh, I would like them to tell you what they're guiding you towards. They don't court currently do that. So I don't know, like, why am I doing five adventures in the grand tour campaign? What is that leading me towards? I know as Garawar that this is leading me towards unlocking Dritzdale Erden, not the leader of the campaign is the hall. Uh, and I know that collecting 500 total item levels is leading me towards unlocking Mert as a patron. The game doesn't really tell us that at the moment, which is unfortunate. Uh, whereas like unlock a skin really is just that, that should have been a collection quest. Open a time gate should have been a collection quest. Um, they're just trying to get you champions and skins. Uh, this is actually what this does is it unlocks the, this section over here once you get one and and that's mm. 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 uh and then the rest of these are like hey these are these are milestone type things like hey complete four adventures in tomb that's you know because you're on your way you're basically making your way through tomb they're trying to guide you and kind of reward you for for making progress and it's for all kinds of things we've got opening chests you've got getting blessings uh unlocking new feats completing variants Everything is in here with uh, with varying rewards. Um, as you can see, or if you may have noticed, the kind of default reward they went with is Corrupted Gems. Corrupted Gems can be spent in the Thayan Enclave in the shop. That, that Thayan Enclave is available all the time. Uh, it is part of the... It was, it was added as part of Emergence Events, and while Emergence Events may be limited time only, the Thayan Enclave is always open open for business. So you'll always be able to spend these corrupted gems. Uh, some of them are chest rewards. Uh, you can see I've got electrums and golds here, uh, but the chest rewards can vary. I've, uh, on my main account, I've seen uh, Modron component chests. I've seen patron chests. We've seen a champion specific chests. So there's a variety of different chests you can earn as well. But the big, the big kind of focus seems to be on corrupted gems currently. Uh, as you complete them, you'll start seeing this, this window flashing over here and you can come in and come and complete and claim your stuff. There's also a claim all button. If you just, if there's a, if you finish a bunch of stuff at once, you can just claim it all. Uh, and then you can always go back and check and see when did I, when did I finish this? When did I claim them? It's going to actually tell you what you got. It's going to give you the date and the time. Uh, so it's tracking uh, your progress you know, uh, basically through these quests, through these quests. Um, so that's what the guy in collection quest is currently. Um, like I said, I, I'm hoping there are going to be some iterative passes on this specifically. This is what I've, this is what I was excited for and was waiting for, for a very long time, uh, knowing that it was coming to the game and it's not doing what I was hoping it would do. Um, but, but I have had that conversation with uh, the designer and they understand and, and it is, it is a step forward. We now have like kind of, kind of the foundation in the game and now they need to uh, just kind of organize it and make it into that thing that will truly, uh, help give new players direction as they're progressing through the game. Uh, and even when you're, even if you're, you know, you're not a new player anymore, you're in the mid game and you're like, well, there's a lot of options in mid game. Where am I supposed to go? It's, this system, hopefully in the future will help you with that as well. Uh, let's hop over. Let me swap this. It's going to go away for a second and it's going to come back. Hey, we're on my main account now. We're on my main account now. All right. Uh, so in game, uh, when you're in a run, you come over here this button uh it's the info button that says hey here you can find achievements collections quests and the journal um so achievements is going to take you to the new achievement page which we didn't look at yet i was i was going to look at it over here uh collections which we just we just it's the overall page 
quests, that's specifically that guide quest. And then journal does not take you to that new journal. It takes you to the old one. And I don't know why. I think it's because the loot tab exists here and only here. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so if we come down here and we click collections, boom, here's, here's, here's my version of the collection screen as uh, screen. And, um, it is not as full as I would like after six and a half years, but let's be honest. Uh, I did not have a reason to finish some of the content in the game other than just completionism before. Uh, now it's like, Hey, at least I'm going to get some, some small rewards for it. So why not? Uh, so yeah. Uh, so a little bit different progress, like campaigns here. We've got them all. Got to catch them all. And the only reason, again, I'm at 99.4% and it's, uh, yeah, it's because of this. <laughs> but again, this is one of those things that they're going to be fixing so that you can 100% everything. Um, but this is, this putting this system, this kind of stuff was never really tracked before. Uh, so it didn't really matter that that, that, that variant existed in the game files uh because something like this didn't exist uh, it wasn't tracking that kind of information now that it is they have to go out uh, they have to go through and clean up all of these kind of loose ends that they have in all their data right uh because if it wasn't fronted to the community then they didn't have to clean it up and now they do now they do so now you can find everything like i've got my this is interesting my average item level across all champions i don't find that a useful number but it is interesting, I guess, to see uh, <laughs> average equipment rarity. Oh, hey, look, purple. Imagine that. 100% uh, complete on all my champions it is nice. It does feel good. It does feel good. Slightly different with my Brunor. Right? So, yeah. It does feel good once you get there. But uh, So this is when, you know, you might need more sorting values, right? So you're going to see the places that you've run into all of these enemy, all of these... Uh, uh, types of enemies, if you're going to hunt from them, they do note, like, for uh, one thing I did like, and I wanted to point out, is they do note, um, uh, like, certain events. Like, if you're going to time gate something to find it in an event, it's the Bandit's Harvest specifically for Stokey, because there's a lot of different versions of the Bandit's Harvest, but, you know, Bandit's Harvest Stokey, but technically that means any Bandit's Harvest. Uh, so they're not, they're not, even this isn't showing everything that it should. Um, Again, uh, because it should just be the Bandit's Harvest, period. Every the Bandit's Harvest adventure will have these champions in them. Uh, so this is, this is neat, but it's not necessarily accurate. Uh, more stuff they got to work on, right? Uh, where should we go? Oh, achievements. So achievements, we didn't look at those over here. Uh, so uh, achievements are going to open up. They're going to be nice and compact. You can just pick uh, what you're targeting to look at first. Um, and then open them up, uh, and go. The one thing that is, uh, that they just added, oh, there it is. I was going to say that's missing is, uh, they had taken away, we had lost the total, but this is the bonus that you get for all of your achievements total is now up here at the top left. Uh, yeah. And then you can scroll through and see your progress. I'm, I'm a hundred percent complete. That makes me happy. That makes me happy, but that's only going to be true until Wednesday when they add new achievements, <laughs> when they add new achievements. Uh, but you can sort and filter with a variety, with some different source options like events, non-events, which is nice if you're trying to track stuff down, uh, complete, incomplete. Uh, you can just open everything, close everything, go away button, uh, and hunt down whatever kind of achievements you want. Um, I think there's probably still... I think one thing that this could use, and again, this is feedback to the devs, is a search bar. I just want to search, like, if if I want, if I just want to find out where the heck do I do, uh, where is where are Briv's achievements? Uh, I want to be able to search Briv and then have it open up Festival of Fools and just show me the the achievements that are related to Briv. Um, I think that would be great. Uh, but right now, it's still again, it's still this is first iteration. First iteration. Uh, so let's look at some of the ones that weren't open before on the other count. So skins are just going to be presented uh, in all their glory and infamy. Uh, I do not own all the skins in the game, but I do have a, a lot. 104. Wow. 
course, I might don't understand standard versus premium here. I'll be honest. Um, have they given away 113? God, that just feels weird. Uh, but premium is supposed to be ones that you buy it with cash. So I haven't. Uh, that's still that's what, 94. I don't know. So some of these are are I'm not. I just this, again, this is an iterative thing. Some of these are still a little. Oh yes, this is a. Uh, this is. <laughs> This is cosplay Minsk. This is Minsk dressing up as Boo. And I love these large uh, versions of the skins. Uh, and if you'll note, Boo is dressed up as Minsk. He's got the little purple face paint. Yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, so if you ever wanted to see big versions of the skins, these in all their glory, this is this is where you come. Uh, here's one you won't see often. <laughs> I love you, Benman, but yeah. Yeah, so there's a Solstice Benwin. Um, and Beekeeper Rosie. Yeah, this, this is probably one of my, my more favorite editions. Is just You get these nice, uh, really big versions. Of, here's like Krampus Crawl. And you really get to see the detail that goes into the artwork. Even though they're these tiny little things on the screen, they've, they've done a really good job of providing uh, good art. Even when it's scrunched up. Oh, wait, wait, is this... Here is the, the skin that launched a thousand uh, pitchforks. <laughs> Barovian Witchbird song. Oh, yeah. Uh, time gates, uh, they track uh, a little oddly, like they're like champions with at least one time gate open. I don't need that. What? And that's actually what's killing my completion. Like, and they're going to be removing this because uh, you shouldn't have to time gate every champion in the game as a completion thing. If I already unlocked them and fully geared them up, why would I ever run a time gate for them? Uh, so you know, some of these uh, initial, some of the initial uh, filter like things that they're tracking maybe were a little misguided, and uh, and the, this is again. This is supposed to be removed, uh, but it is neat that it tells you like, hey, time gates open for Stokey, highest area reached, total chests have changed. These are cool. These are cool numbers, um, but but like I shouldn't have to time gate every champion, right? Like there are champions that I've never time gated, like all of the new ones, and I I made well, I guess I did that one. Uh, natural time gate weekend it had to be a natural time gate weekend because there's no reason for me to do so, right? Uh, and patrons. So we currently have four patrons. There's a fifth one coming soon. TM. Uh, you can see everything. Like, if you, did you purchase all their stuff? Uh, where have you done their uh, their patron variants? So I can see, wow, you know, I do have some stuff I need to do in certain places. I don't have to click all around. I don't have to click through all the maps. I can come here into the... The collections dialogue for the patron and see what do I have what do I need to finish what have I not done yet um the strad's going to be the most empty one yep yep <laughs> but you know what he's at he's at a very nice percentage complete uh so he may just stay there <laughs> uh yeah so you know tra tra everything every, your progress is now tracked and visible which is something uh People have been consistently asking for since the very first year of this game um, is is stat tracking for everything you're doing. People have wanted this in uh, since year one, um, and we finally get it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, so hopefully lots more to come uh, in terms of adjustments. Uh, but this is what we're looking at currently. Uh, let's look at the guide and collection quests uh, kind of at a higher end. Uh, it is gonna, it is gonna give you very high, like this one isn't doable. The 400s need to go away because those, those aren't doable yet. Uh, but like the 300s, uh, you know, the reward isn't super great, but they are tracking your progress. Uh, and corrupted gems do tend to be the, the, the number one reward. So, um, you're going to see that a lot. You're going to see that a lot. Uh, I think when I hit claim all on Wednesday, uh, like I had over 60,000 corrupted gems that it awarded me. There's a lot. So there's a lot there. Uh, I actually think maybe that's, maybe, maybe they need to just 
up that a little bit. I also had an inventory full of chests. So many chests. Uh, I still have some of them in here, uh, <laughs> if you're curious. Uh, you know, 17-ish, 16, 17 patron chests. There's still some more to earn. I had... Uh, a bunch of, oh yeah, I had a bunch of individual chests. Every time you unlock, uh, nowadays, every time you unlock, or with this system, uh, every time you unlock a evergreen champion, you're going to get chests for that, just specifically for them, which was an interesting choice. Um, uh, unlocking Modron stuff gets you, you can get Modron component chests. So they've added, you know, a few more Modron component chests to the earning track. Um, so yeah. Lots of stuff going on with collections and guide quests. It is a, a big thing. It can be very confusing uh, to look at because there's just a lot of options. Um, so just, just understand, A, uh, if you want to find information, you can prob there's pro it's probably in here now. Uh, if, there's, if there's a filter that you'd like to have, submit feedback. Uh, but also know that, that, you know, they are actively, they actively want you to be able to a hundred percent all of these boxes with whatever the current level of content is in the game. Uh, and then they will add more stuff, uh, as more content drops. And then you can just target that thing, uh, to complete it. They very much want you to feel like this is completed. This isn't like, uh, like year one when achievements were dropped and there were just achievements where they're like, well, that one's going to take you like a year or two. You're just going to have to wait. Like they had, they had put some in that you were going to work towards over years. They, now they've kind of learned that lesson. Hopefully like some of this wasn't supposed to be on and it, and it was, um, they had just, you know, they had prepped stuff for the future and it, it, it all went into the build. <laughs> unfortunately. So they've got to just kind of section that stuff out and then they'll activate it in the future. Um, so if you are someone who has put in a lot of work and you've collected all the things, uh, don't worry. Those hundred percent are supposed to fill up soon. Um, they had said uh, hopefully by next week. Uh, well, like I said, we've already seen one patch and it's fixed some things um, and given people some rewards that, that it wasn't crediting right away. Uh, so, you know, give them some time there and then, and just, you know, submit feedback about extra things that you would like to see if it's not meeting all of your expectations. Like for me, the, the guide quests I had a long conversation about guide quests. Cause for me, that's the big thing I, I like, I have a guide called the, uh, the new player reference, uh, AKA a guided tour. It's literally guiding you through the game for new players. Um, uh, specifically because I want to see, you know, because the game didn't have it, and I was hoping this would be that. It's not quite yet. It's not quite yet. But it, but it's got the potential to. Um, so, uh, what else are we going to talk about? Collection guide quests. Um, I don't know. We may just go to break early, and then do lots of Q and A. I think I'm fine. I think I'm fine with that. Uh, so let's go with the, uh, what, what song is the break song? Oh, because, uh, because the, the, in honor of starting my new account, uh, the tutorial dwarf himself has a song. It's called the greatest dwarven king, uh, for Brunor Battlehammer, the leader of the companions of the hall. Charging on the field, battle wave the banner that no one ever yields, so they run with the clamor, yeah. Bruno, battle hammer, ranks close in, but the whole line shatters. Hail of arrows, you can hear the clamor, yeah. The lads can't hold against the king so bold. Kings, 
age is fine. Hammer of the gods, all the heroes sang. Keep for the sun and blaze by his hand. Gone to grim. Lifetime of searching was the doom of him. He sacrificed the nine, the hearts of all the dear. Hey, we're back. That was the original acoustic version of uh, Bruner's song. You can actually find it in the jukebox, though. So you can find the, the fully produced version uh, over here. Greatest Orton King. Yay. Uh, all right, I'm going to dive into the questions. Let's see if we can hit the stuff on topic first. I got about a dozen folks, so if you've got more questions uh, about today's topic or just about the game in general, uh, let them loose. Uh, Gabe's ready to grab them, uh, and I'm ready to answer them. Governor Explosion, will be will we be able to search filter by affiliation so we can see how much of a group we currently have? I think that would be a great addition. It's definitely not in the game currently. Um, I I just went and looked, and I was like, wow, that's not in. <laughs> that felt like a default thing to me, but it's not. It would I think Champion Origin maybe is where it should have been under. Uh. Or actually, you know, just its own thing. It's probably its own filter that says affiliation that would tab through all of, like, would have unaffiliated and then would show each of the affiliations. It'd probably be a good idea. I think that actually would be great. I just want to shout out that um, they do. Uh, shout out uh, to all the haters. Uh, core, core are, the, look, I've, I've argued this forever. Core champions are the first 12. That's their name. It's now there's a filter for it. So deal with it. <laughs> The only thing that I think they got, I think they just made it confusing though, because then they said evergreen and that included the core. And no, don't make it non core evergreen. That's just confusing. Evergreen, this should just be evergreen. And then you have core. Stop confusing the community. <laughs> don't, don't combine core and evergreen and then evergreen and non core evergreen. That's too many. That's too confusing, folks. These are evergreen champions. And then there's the core 12. I will. I'll die on that hill. And I'm glad that there's finally a filter just for the core champions. Uh, but yeah, I think affiliation would be great. I would be, I think that would be great. Uh, Lurking Rider, have you noticed if you've still got the legacy achievements you originally had before Collections 2.0? Good question, because uh, I did not check on my main account. So let's go check. Uh, let me go. So there were some uh, champion based achievements that were very old. I have, there's a legacy section here. And no, I am missing a lot of legacy achievements. Here's the thing. Uh, this one says champion damage 1% and under legacy, it shouldn't have any. I, I feel like what's, what's probably happening is it's not showing uh, the achievements that aren't, that don't give you bonuses because legacy achievements, none of them are supposed to give you any bonuses. Uh, that's a bug. That's a big bug. I'm going to submit that because why have a legacy tab if you're not going to include your legacy achievements? Uh, but it's weird because they are showing champion achievements that don't have percentages. I have, uh, my community champion achievement, which has no bonus reward. It's showing up. That was the first thing I checked. I'm like, I better not lose my achievement because that one I have to go in and, and give you by hand. Um, yeah. It's definitely submit a ticket. That's definitely bugged. Uh, you should get uh, all of your legacy achievements. Yeah, they shouldn't count towards your percentage completion, but but they should be visible. They should be visible because you can't earn them anymore, right? 
Supply to the Valkyrie. Is there currently any purpose to the premium progress indicator? Is it not active yet? Oh, no, there's a reason. It's it, it's there. Uh, if we turn this on, you'll see my numbers change down on like skins and familiars specifically. Because then what they're tracking is like how many of the, the premium skins you've unlocked. Is it going to count towards your overall percentage or not, right? Uh, because, you know, otherwise it's going to go off just your standard skins and standard familiars. Uh, otherwise with premium on, it's going to include, you know, paid ones. So there's, there's a difference. Uh, it is active. Um... Somewhat related, MC1740 asks, what is the best thing to get for your corrupted gems? Since that's, that's what we're earning in the currency shop, right? Uh, in in as that's the big rewards from the collections and guide quests. Um, well, I got like eighty five thousand. Uh, so uh, this is the Thane Enclave. I guess I, sh I should have included that before. Oh, that should have been before the break thing. Uh, asked me, just making trouble for present me yet again. Um. So, I mean, it's right at the top. The number one thing that uh, pretty much everyone's going to recommend is Marvelous Support Pigments. Right off the top, that's kind of the best kit. And you know what? I'm going to go over... Uh, I'm going to show the full store. I want to show the full store. So let's go over to my other account uh, and hop into... Because I can't get to, the, to that screen from here. Let's just hop into a Curse Farmer Free Play. Oops. Music's on. I like the music on when I'm playing on this account. All right, so let's go over here. Now we can see everything. So uh, the number one kind of uh, default go-to item that I think everybody uh, generally would say is a solid choice that you're not going to regret is a marvelous support pigment. Um, there, now, there, for newer players, this can only go on an epic piece of equipment, so a purple piece of equipment. Um, but, you know, You'll get those pretty quickly. Uh, this is kind of the most bang for your buck, generally speaking. Remember, there's exceptions to every rule. Uh, but this is, uh, once you put it on a piece of equipment, it adds a separate buff that is damage of all champions by 200%. That's a triple damage bonus for each of these. For your formation, if that champion's in your formation, your formation just tripled its damage uh, for every support pigment you put on it. And they mold, they don't add... It's not an additive if you have like six, if you have a pigment on each piece of equipment, that's not additively 200%. That's, they're each their own separate multipliers. Um, so these are a big deal uh, just for power on champions. Again, they can only go on, um, on champions that have epic equipment. And only if they have the support pigment specifically is only for champions that have the support tag. They have to have the support tag. The other things that they offer in the Thane Enclave are going to be golden epics for uh, a couple champions each time. So this time around, it's Nerds and Dynahair. Last Emergence event, it was Virgil and Carlock. Um, uh, they leave, like every time there's a new set, that this these this stuff will be in the shop until the next emer until after the next Emergent event ends. Whereas you can see this these are going to go away. Uh, and when they go away... They will end up in the wild offer system. So golden epics will end up as cash purchases in the wild offer system. There's also skins again, a couple skins each time around. Uh, skins again, also things that uh, when they go away end up as cash, as cash offers in the wild offer system. Feats. Uh, there's usually a lot of feats, as you can see this time around. I think it's ever Minsk through uh, Dynahair. Last time I think was. Carlock? Yes, last time was Carlock. So four feats. Um, when feats leave this system, they just go into the gem system after a little while. I think it's like three months after uh, they disappear from this system, they end up in the gem shop. So I tend to treat these as previews of upcoming things, unless it's something that I really want right now. If it's a big deal for, for me and the way I play, I might just grab it immediately. I might just grab it immediately. Uh, but a little lot, I think these are lower priority, right? Because you're going to get end up being able to get them for regular gems and regular gems. You can get a lot more of, 
uh, over time. Uh, and then we have the chests. And generally speaking, I avoid chests. I don't recommend buying chests. Um, at some point, when you have support pigments on every single item on every single one of your support champions, and you've got some in the bank for when the next support champion drops then Modron component chests will be a, a big purchase for you because Modron component chests are the hardest chests to obtain in the game. But because the reward is random from them, uh, they're not worth as much, like three of these aren't worth as much as one of these because it's utter RNG as to what you get. And even if you get a good piece, that doesn't mean it's going to equate to like a triple damage bonus from here, right? Um, so in feats, there are some golden feats that, uh, occasionally are gold, excuse me, golden epics. Uh, you kind of have to understand what the epic is doing and, and figure out if it's worth it for you. Uh, epics are, of, I mean, A, you're going to get an epic piece of equipment if you didn't have it before, but B, it is, it is gilded with as golden. That's this inner golden border. Um, and what that does is it gives you a hundred percent bonus to the power of this item slot. Uh, so normally this Epic would increase the nerds fighter ability by 275%, but we get the double, we get a double on that. So it's 550% and that's the base value. And then all your item levels are more efficient, right? Because they're good because that power is worth more on a golden Epic. So a lot of times, uh, if it's a champion that you don't have a lot of item levels in and you don't plan on putting a lot of item levels in, these may not be worth it for you. But if they're a champion that you are going to invest a lot of item levels in, hi Virgil, I'm looking at you, you high maintenance champion. Uh, <laughs> Virgil, Virgil's golden epic is his speed item. So right away, it's, if it supports speed on, an, on a character, that's, that's got a higher value for you uh, because speed items are ones where we generally, uh, if there's a speed item, uh, we generally want to put item levels onto that champion to make, to help their speed effect to do better. And, and when you get a golden on them, uh, Virgil specifically has a cap to get to the highest power for his speed effect. Uh, golden means that you can get to that cap faster. Uh, you know, all of those item levels are more effective, uh, as they come on. So you can cap it faster. So this is a higher priority, uh, ep golden epic. Uh, you can also look for golden epics like Dyna hairs. I know people are still, I feel like people misunderstand Dyna hair a bit, uh, but that's fine. Um, Dyna hair is, is a mathematically overpowered champion in the sense that she has an ability that is multiplicatively stacking. And with this item and using her left specialization becomes, uh, the modifiers become pre-stack modifiers. Uh, th those are the most powerful abilities in the game. So she is a part of that group. Um, you know, how well that scales, they, you know, different, different, uh, mop abilities, as we call them, uh, scaled in different ways. Some are better than others, but she is. She is just by definition uh, stronger with item levels than any than the non mop champions, right? And this golden epic just makes this is the specialization is what is what you want to support. This is this is the way to go. So on my main account, uh, this is why I came over here. I have already bought that because I know I want to support her being OP, right? When I use her, uh, and then Carlock is Bay. Are we done? Carlock is Bay, so you just get all the Carlock stuff. <laughs> Specifically, though, Carlock is a tank, so getting a Golden Epic tank item, uh, Golden Epic for her health, uh, makes her tank better, right? So all of the bonuses for that I'm putting in for item levels beef her up uh, even more than she already is to make her healthy. And her uh, mop ability, her mathematically overpowered one, the multiplicative one, is her health share. So building up health on this item uh, and then putting her into like a multi-tank formation or, or just using her as a DPS with other tanks in the front lines. She will help uh, make those tanks beefier uh, and survive more because of an item like this. Uh, and her health share ability. So I went for that one personally too. So a lot of it's personal choice. Um, like I would never buy this one, but Lurking Rider would. 
<laughs> and anybody who's going to go uh, uh, hard on Willy Wonka, this you know niche build with Will and nerds, uh, might want this too, right? So you in, in a lot of the, in a lot of cases, you really have to make uh, just your personal subjective uh, choices here. And I don't think there's wrong choices. However you want to spend your, your gems is fine. Uh, just know that there are, if you're trying to be, you know, effective with power, there are some things that are more higher priority than others. Um, just understand, you know, where all this is going to end up after it leaves and whatnot, and you're fine, right? Uh, like, I've picked up some of the skins before. These skins don't do it for me. But uh, like the sentry skin from the last one or two, from two emergence events ago, absolutely picked that one up, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, make good decisions. Take that information, make good decisions. Uh, yeah. And know that, you know, while we are earning corrupted gems for completing those uh, the quests, um, you can also earn them uh, right now and, and whenever they have emergence events. Uh, oh, man. This is as upsetting on my new player account because I don't I don't play it all the time. I only play it on stream. Uh, so you want to go in and you want to get all your daily goals each day, which means doing doing like a free play each day. Um, if 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 you're like me on a new player account and you're just pushing through adventures and variants, uh, you just need a little bit of downtime spent in Mad Wizard on a level with a portal spawning lots of, of mind flares, uh, and you can get your hundred kills a day and get yourself some and, and max out your available gems. So just check in on that every day. Cause that's, this is a lot of gems you can earn. It's 31,500 from drops and it's, uh, it's going to be right around that same amount from your daily quest. So get your 60,000 gems every time these come up, uh, easily and buy stuff out of the shop with them. Buy stuff out of the shop with them. All right, Brunor. Well, you know what? I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave you killing things here because you seem to be doing okay. Uh, let me go back to more questions. Uh, but you got to make sure you get your daily quest in is basically the thing there with, uh, with the emergence event because it's not difficult. It's not difficult. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, we go back and we're going to do general questions. Uh, let's get game related ones first. Kimmy, I'm 420. I just returned after a long time away. Welcome back. First thing I always ask someone when they say they've just, they've just started playing the game again is had you signed up for the newsletter previously? If you did and you didn't delete them from your inbox, Go find them because all of those codes are still valid and it may take you a while to punch them all in, but that's a lot of free stuff, <laughs> including some champions and some skins. So, um, whenever, if, if, yeah, welcome back. Go, uh, hopefully you signed up for the newsletter, go get some free stuff. And to anybody who hasn't signed up for the newsletter before, look, uh, right up here, main menu, newsletter. Uh, oops. Yeah, well, that's okay. That's my publicly available email address anyway. Uh, enter it in uh, and and get and get hitched today. That's how you unlock hitch as a champion. But then also every week you get a free chest. You get a free chest. In fact, uh, the art this week. Hold on, I gotta go over here. The art this week on this week's chest is pretty great. It's all the way down here. Can you see this? Kind of. It's got the face. It's got this cool face on it. We need a section in the. Um, in the collections uh, with the chests. But the problem is I just want to be able to see all the art the problem is, is like, you can't go back and collect them anymore. They do all this great art for these one off chests and we never see them again. And uh, it's so sad. So sad. Uh, all right. Anyway, let's get back to your, your, your questions. Much shock. I watched some of your recent guides and events are changing. They are. Yes. Choose my time gate pieces now or save them. Um, because, uh, because the first event 2.0 is happening Wednesday, the sixth. So we're only four days away now. Uh, I would wait because that's going to give you a brand new champion. The dark urge coming from Baldur's gate three. It's going to get you a reworked champion and Daddyus the scarlet. And then you'll have uh three flex free flex slots. 
uh, to choose from uh, other champions from that event from the past, as well as a couple other champions from uh, associated from from events that are uh, being removed because now they're going from 17 events to 12. Um, so they got to redistribute some of those to, to new places. Um, so you'll be able to pick three out of those uh, just for free. Um, and, and, you know, save your time, get pieces until you know what five champions you're going to be getting, you know, you'll get those, you'll get, you'll get the dark urge and daddy uh, if you didn't have daddy before, and then you get three more and then you can use time gate pieces uh, for other things. Yeah, I would, I would wait a little bit. You don't have to wait four days. So get situated in the current game and then, uh, and then go from there. Headhunter Amar, can you explain the supporter slot that the blog talks about? Six champ slot if you buy it. So they just released uh, the Events 2.0 blog. And one of the things that hadn't been uh, talked about before now is an additional flex slot. So like I said, there's there's two focused like champions, featured champions, I think is what they're calling them, for the event. And it's a new one and a reworked. And then there's three flex slots for free. And you can pick any of those to get any champion from the from the the list that they're going to populate and tell us what what's coming in this coming event. But the list they'll populate uh, six of them should be past Festival of Fools champions, and then two or three others, right? Um, but then they talked about a supporter slot, and basically what it is, I guess there there's going to be a sixth potential flex slot that can open but only for people who buy specially marked DLC that are event related DLC uh, while the event is active. So if you decide you want to buy, you know, uh, whatever, I, we don't know what these new DLC are. I have no idea. So, but if you, if they're like, well, if you're going to support the game with cash, we're going to let you unlock another champion from the, from the event. That's what it, that's what it reads like. So, yeah. So yeah, it's basically a sixth slot, uh, a fourth flex slot, but a sixth champion you can get uh, during that event. Hmm. Uh, Nubles, when will be the next champ? I, I mean, Wednesday. The Dark Urge comes Wednesday the 6th. Uh, in other words, can I burn my electrums with time to gather more for the next champ? No, you cannot. <laughs> No, you cannot. Four days from now, Nubles. Hold on to those Electrums. Uh, that's uh, New players use your Electrums, but mid-game to end-game players, uh, it is a strategy to efficiently gear up new champions to hold on to Electrum. So yeah, uh, potentially unlocking a lot of new champs on Wednesday. Uh, or just getting the newest one on Wednesday. Uh, events now will always start the first Wednesday of every month. Even if the first Wednesday is the first day of the month, it's always going to be the first Wednesday of every month. Uh, so, so it's much easier to know when events are going to start now. And then they're going to last for three weeks. They're going to last for three weeks. William Smith, uh, do they now let you fill in missed rarities for item level capped items? Um, I don't know about capped items. I know they just made a change to Electrum chests so that if you open, if you're opening Electrum chests and you already have, uh, you know, like a blue or higher blue or better on that piece of gear, but, but maybe your white or green is missing that it will, that it will fill in that lower level rarity, but that's. I know that works on uh, uncapped items. I don't know if it works on capped items. That's a Dev Insights question. Uh, with the collection system, you would think that would you would want that. So there's another thing. This is a good time to bring that up on Dev Insights. Liliantra, uh, have you discovered a way to see which champion has the highest item level? Yes. Uh, it's just not in the collections. <laughs> I don't know if there's one in the collections. Hold on. But the old school way to do it is to come over here and pop a tiny blacksmithing contract. Uh, and then I'm going to sort by item level. There we go. So my highest average item level is Tyrol at 12,795. Uh, alternately, my lowest is Nixie at 201. It's not bad. Not bad. Where's uh? Wait a minute. 
Oh, Dininger came in at 224. Nice. Good job for the new champ. All right. Uh, now let's go see uh, over here, though. Uh, let's see. Equipment. Sort and filter. Is it the same stuff? No. Name and seat. They didn't put item level. Seats alignment slot fill state. Minimum all slot rarity. Nope. Yeah, I don't see a filter here for item level. This is where I. This is where it should be. So that's a filter that needs to be requested. Is they need to? I mean, they have that uh, under blacksmithing contracts. It's up here under the very top level. So they should just add another one here to this top level sort that is. Um, average item level, and that would resolve that. So you could s submit a ticket and then say yeah, there's, this would be nice, or wait and try to do it on Dev Insights, uh, or post it on the subreddit. Yeah. Saudi T, have you had the opportunity to play around with the Ceramorphosis formation? Uh, I'm just going to stop there. Not really. I think I've tried it once. I think uh, effectively it's just. To me, that's building a car lock formation uh, because she's my she's my new primary DPS. Um, but uh, as odd as it may sound, it isn't necessarily optimal to use all of them with her. Currently, we'll see what happens. So there's still two more. I mean, there's the Dark Urge, which is coming Wednesday, and then we're still waiting on Gale. Uh, from the Origin Champions from Baldur's Gate Three. So uh, plus, they've just added a lot of tadpole feats. And I'm not going to buy them with Corrupted Gems. So it's going to be a while before uh, before you can f I can fully explore uh, what a what a Ceramorphosis formation looks like. Because ideally, you would want uh, full tadpoles. Everybody in the formation with a tadpole, right? Uh, Rough Rider, do you have plans for the two hours between the end of this stream and the start of your own stream on your channel? Why is it two hours? Did it get delayed today and nobody told me? Uh, an hour after this stream ends, folks, uh, I, I will be streaming over my channel, Twitch TV slash Gar, where you can click on my name there and chat. Give me a follow if you like. Um, I mean, my, so my plans are, are the same as they always are. Try to take over the world. No, wait. Uh, no, I, I go get lunch. I go and get lunch in between. It's on my Twitch schedule that way? It shouldn't be. Something got messed up. Something got messed up. Uh, but no, it's always an hour after this one. Yeah, I don't know. It's no, it looks right to me. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna blame Twitch on that because it looks it looks fine to me. Uh, but yeah, join me uh, later today. I'll be I'll be playing that new player account I was just showing off. Uh, yeah. Uh, you old Lancer, can you still get the strong Modron core? Yes. It was sold for gems, but the collection now says locked. Uh, in the collection, it's locked because because you haven't unlocked it yet. So the collection just means that when the collection says locked anywhere, what it's talking about is you you haven't unlocked that item yet, so it can't start tracking anything for you. Um, the way you buy the the strong core is silly. Uh, you come here into the the party window. Down here, this adventuring party window. And then down here, there's a little green button that nobody notices that says buy additional cores. And the strong core will be here. Silly. Sometimes they're silly. <laughs> uh, Rough Rider, like I said, Twitch be twitching if it's not if it's not showing you the correct times. And that doesn't tell me anything because that's telling me in your time zone and not mine. And I just looked at it in my time zone, and it looked fine. Uh, Ricardo, so speaking of golden epics, did you check out the weekend chests? Uh, I did. Uh, and if you're a Dinah Hair fan, uh, this is a good week for you because, like I said, uh, in the corrupted in the emergence event, you can get her uh, her spec golden epic, which is what supports. Her mathematically overpowered ability. Uh, again, in the left spec, and then this one is her speed item. So she is she is both 
We call her Swiffer because she's a she's a speed champion with item support that is also a mop champion. So she's a Swift. It's a Swiffer. Look, we have a lot of free time in our hands in this community to come up with odd names. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is if you throw like you know six bucks at the game this weekend, you get her, you get her golden epic for a speed item, and she is high maintenance like Virgil. She needs, she needs gilding bad, uh, or else you're dumping tons, even more item levels into her. She's greedy. She's greedy. This is a better shot of those chests, though. Don't they look so good? I really like those chests. All right. Uh, I don't know. That's it's less of a question and more of an exclamation. Uh, Aggie Jess, if you had to guess, how long will it take them to make improvements to time gates that they've been hinting at? Months. Like for them to do like a time. I mean, you know, they said it's on the you know one of their priorities after after collections and and events 2.0 right that are releasing right now and then they have to make sure that those are in good states uh and then they can start working on you know uh updating time gates because that needs to happen now that events are changing um months i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't ex i would expect the middle of the year uh at the earliest yeah uh because I don't, I don't mean, you know, collections and a rework system came out and needs some iteration and, and events 2.0 is about to come out and it might need some iteration. Um, so yeah, I mean, not, not quickly. Rough Rider, are there any discounted time gates? Uh, so there aren't seasons anymore. Uh, for the foreseeable future, but for the moment, for some reason, uh, it still has, I guess they forgot to unflag it. It still has the five season champions as discounted. So if you're a newer player, uh, and you have three time gate pieces, um, you know, and you don't have these champions, you might want to pick one up. Uh, Virgil's a speed champion. I like my speed champions. Uh, they were, they all got a pretty solid, you know, they're all in pretty, pretty solid place now. So it's not like there's, I don't feel like there's bad ones there anymore but that's not going to be like if they do discounted champions again they're going to have to come out for some other reason to have a discount i think they're i think their thing is we're going to rework how time gates work and hopefully that'll be better a better overall system for people and then you know the discounts won't matter right we'll see we'll see uh the versace owl uh, what are the drop rates for time gate pieces? One every five to six days. I feel like I've been five, six pieces for so long. Well, if you've been five out of six, it's been for five or six days. So here's the way, uh, here's the way the time gate pieces drops work. They drop only off of bosses. Here's rule number one. You gotta be, you gotta be killing bosses. If you're, if you're not, if you're just farming a single lever for like, for like Zorbu kills, you're not going to get any time gate pieces. Uh, you gotta be killing bosses. Uh, once you've, once you've picked one up, an internal timer starts and you can't pick another one up for like five days. And the reason we say five to six days is because it starts off once that timer ends, it isn't immediate that you're going to loot one. There is a, a percent chance that it will drop off a boss, but every boss you kill after that has an increased percent chance to drop it. If it didn't drop before up until the point where it's guaranteed and that depending on how you're playing the game that means it might be five or six days before you kill it right if you're if you're doing lots of pushing and lots of boss killing uh on that day five you should get it pretty quickly on day five but if you're a more of a casual player it, it might take a little longer because you just may not be logging in and killing bosses but yeah it's five to six days uh, and if you have the blessing, you get double drops. There's a blessing that gives you an extra one, but yeah. Uh, oh, okay. anyway, Gertis, is there a place you can see a character sheet before opening a time gate? Nope. I was kind of hoping that came in this, uh, in this update, right? Oh, let's get campaigns. Hold on. Uh, 
champions. I was kind of hoping that if oh, and this is this is I need to look at it on my other account. Hold on. Um, I was hoping that if you came here and you went to a champion you didn't have that that you'd be able to click on them. Uh, and go over and, and see, like, I, I was hoping there would be ability information in here. There isn't any. It's literally just what gear do you have on them, what skins are available, and what feats are available. I was hoping for more of a champion page with information that would let people go, oh, in-game, I could go research Drizzt or Regis. Um, so, again, that's that's more feedback for them. I think that I think it would be smart. Uh, clearly, I think that would be fantastic. Um, doesn't currently exist in the game. Uh, I've got a guide for that, though. <laughs> and over, I am shameless, and I will always be shameless, because, you know, i got to pay the bills. Uh, and over the link that's about to pop up in the, in the chat from the bot. Uh, I've got a guide for every champion in the game, and it, and it gives you all of the information about them. Has all their abilities and everything. So, all right, uh, we're out of game questions. So let me go back. Well, this is kind of a game question. Letty, are you going to work on your Brave Gem Farm on stream today? No, I am. I am streaming my new player account only. You know, sorry, folks who like watching me play on my main account, uh, but I am all about. Uh, I'm all about running through that new player account right now. So later today, I will be. Firing that new player count up, I think. What was next? We're wherever powered. I'm doing the variant wherever powered, and we're doing a goal. I'm going to do a deep push for favor because I don't like my favor total currently. Um, yeah, and then after wherever powered, should be able to just click through uh, one of the other variants. And then I should have the total I need to then go to move to Terror in the Dark. Terror in the Dark has this silly gate that they just need to remove where they're like, no, oh, no, you've got to go back and do almost all of the variants from the first three or for the first four adventures or whatever. And it's like, or first three adventures. And it's like, I, I don't want it. Why do you make us do that? Uh, so, yeah. So I'm just trying to progress on that account. Uh, the Versace Isle, does the gold boost from favor correlate to how much you have spent or how much you have? Your, your favor is how much, like, the gold boost from favor is how much your current favor is at. So, like, right now in Torm, I have 1.50 E96. That has nothing to do with how much I've spent, right? If I spend it, I've spent E24, if I were to reset this, I would get that back and I'd end up with a, you know, over a E100, what, E1, E120 favor? Which is why there's this warnings enabled button, right? Because if you spend too much of your favor too early, you just, you know, you do bad things to your gold find because your favor is also your gold find. So keep your warnings enabled. And as long as your warnings enabled, when you're buying, when you're buying these, um, and you know what, again, this is, I, I'm, I'm not used to having a new player account active. Let's go over here and I will show you. Uh, I have warnings enabled. I've got some favor. I've spent some favor, but if I click here, this pops up when it does, I just nope right out. It's, it's a really functional warning. It's, it's one of the most functional, uh, check boxes in the game for helping you make good decisions. Um, wait, you know, Mad Mallard, don't confuse me. That's not how math... It may not be... I don't do math on stream, folks. That isn't how math works, is it? It would just still be 96. Oh, yeah. I hate mathing on stream. I hate mathing on stream. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, eventually, like, the amount, the, the amount of favor that you've spent becomes insignificant compared to the amount of favor you actually have. This warnings enable button is what helps you stay in a good balance. In a good balance. Hmm. All right. Uh, I, I hate math on the stream. Uh, D2 Crafty wants you like Carlock over Entrez. Carlock is Bay. Carlock is the best champion. Carlock is the best character. 
Uh, does that mean Antrius is... Not, this is just my personal su uh, subjective opinion. Uh, Antrius is incredibly strong. Is an incredibly strong support champion, right? Uh, yeah. But they butchered my boy Narak. So I had to absolutely massacre him with his rework. Uh, took away his DPS. He was my primary DPS. So I needed a new DPS. And Carlock was coming to the game. And Carlock's here. So, yeah, Carlock. She does real well uh, for me as a DPS. So, All right. Uh, Ruina Arcana. Is it true you have actual magical powers, but you only use them to groom your glorious spirit? No. 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 Uh, in fact, it's, it's having a bad beard day. It's not. It's not obeying if i had magical pure powers i would have a good beard day every day um but no it's just your standard dwarven beard <laughs> it's your standard dwarven beard uh you get it by not shaving and then just uh and then just washing your beard every time you take a shower because cleanliness is important uh and then i brush it with a wooden comb I also have like a boar's hair brush too, but the wooden comb is the big one. The boar's hair brush is just me being fancy. <laughs> uh, Rough Rider, if you were a developer, what would you develop? I'm going to take this like generically because you didn't say if you were a dev for idle champions. So I'm just going to say of games in general. If I were a game dev, what would I want to, what would I want to make? Because that's different from what you would actually get to make. Um, uh, there's two things I, I would love to make. Uh, one is like a, an either eight bit or 16 bit style, you know, that retro style RPG. Cause I really like the ability for, you know, the, the way those tell stories. Cause that's kind of what I grew up with. I like that. doesn't mean I want to play tons of them, but if I were to develop a game, it would totally be that. Cause yeah, I mean, I love, uh, you know, epic triple a uh, games like Baldur's Gate 3 it was amazing um like visually just stunning but you can still tell good stories with uh other art styles with you know even a retro art style so i would probably do i would want to do that uh and also equally as important i would want to make a pirate game like a good pirate game i say good in a very judgmental way uh <laughs> Because I am, a, I am a pirate snob. I play, I go try to play pirate games, and I just get upset. Uh, upset. I recently uh, went and tried out. I did the free trial for Skull and Bones. Yeah, look at you, Skull and Bones. I was gonna call it out, Buddy Beast. I'm calling him out. Uh, I, yeah, I recently played Skull and Bones and, you know, I didn't, I didn't, when I, I've, I have been burned so many times that I don't get my hopes up, but I'm like cautiously optimistic when I try a pirate game. Um, and, uh, and visually like the artists are fantastic. Oh, the art is great. Uh, the sea shanties, when the first sea shanty kicked in, I think I almost split my face open smiling. It just made me so happy. Uh, that's, that's about it. <laughs> that's about all the good things I have to say. Well, no, there's like one more good thing. And that's that, um, the thematically, the quests seem like a cool idea. Like I, th I thought they were doing, you know, not all of them, but a lot of them were, you know, that's like stuff that I would, you know, if I was playing a pirate game, that's the kind of quest I would kind of want for the most part. But there was just so many, so many problems for me with Skull and Bones. Um, first of all, my biggest problem, that's not how ships work. <laughs> like, I just can't. They're zooming around like they're cars, which led us to to give the, the nickname uh, Grand Theft Nauto, like a nautical grand theft auto uh because they're like zooming around like they're cars and they're flying off of waves and bouncing and splashing and turning and sliding and and then when you upset some faction 
when you upset a faction, it does the Grand Theft Auto kind of like the stars of upset. It does like infamy stars and everything starts spawning, coming after you. And it's like, that's not how ships work. They can't react that quickly. What are you talking about? <laughs> and then you're like pulling up. You pull up your ship, right? And you come along broadside. And normally broadside, your cannons, are, they just shoot like this. But then you can just aim your cannons like in different directions and, and like up and down. Sure, a little bit. Fine. But in different directions? No, that's not how ships work. <laughs> that's not how ships work. Um, also, this concept that that pirates were always in ship battles and that you're sinking ships like constantly. Like, that's not how pirates work. Uh, yeah. Tortuga Drift. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, I, I, so for me, those game mechanics uh, killed my enjoyment. Um, you know, if it were a free to play game, I'd, I'd, I'd play it. Um, just because I think there's enough there as a free to play game that I could get some enjoyment out of it. But, but it's like a $70 game. Uh, 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 there's even bad decisions with the graphics in some parts. I'm like, like the very tutorial, they, they have this shipwreck and the ship is cracked in half, but split apart. So you can sail between it. I'm like, that's not how shipwrecks work. <laughs> like what? Um, and then like the way it's up on this, I'm like, what is going on? Like, is the tide, does the tide go up like 20 feet, 20 or 30 feet here? If it does, it would cover these other islands. How did it even get there? I had just. Whoever was making management decisions in that game made choices. Um, and, and. And you know what? There, I was in a, I was in a, I was in like an Ubisoft stream the other day, and it, and it wasn't the developers, but it was like marketing or something playing the game. Um, and I, I you know, I made a comment like like I had asked a, a question about like the development and like you know what made you go with the the Grand Theft Auto style of of combat and uh, and enemies. And somebody replied, every game should uh, should try to be like Grand Theft Auto. And I was like, oh, you're definitely their target audience. But no, that's not how it works. <laughs> no, no, they shouldn't. Oh, man. Dude, my Skull and Bones critique sounds like how EVE Online ships basically use underwater physics. And people complain that that's not how ships work in space. Well. I mean, EVE Online is a, a storied and legendary game, so obviously enough people enjoyed the overall combat, but, but, yeah. Skull and Games is, you know, if, if you like a quick, they definitely went for like quick and active combat, uh, is their goal. Um, but it just kills so much of what is enjoyable is, and what I'm looking for out of a pirate game. Um, but if, if that's, if you like that, if you can, you know, suspend your disbelief enough for that type of game, it's beautiful. And the, and the sea shanties are amazing and they make me happy. Uh, but the rest of it, I, I can't, I can't do this. So yeah, I would love to make, this is all to come back around. I would love to make a, a pirate game. Uh, that is, that is more of an actual representation of, of piracy with, of course, I mean, some allowances for gameplay, right? Um, but you know, there's a lot, if, even if you follow like a more historic version of, of, of what piracy actually was, there's a lot of, of good gameplay available in that, um, yeah, you know, well, and you can chuck over the side the the slavery and the, and the um you know the bad stuff and and not have that in your game, uh, and still represent a good and enjoyable game experience and be you know mostly accurate <laughs> because we don't represent that stuff around here, right? 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm still out of questions, folks. Do we have more questions? <laughs> more questions about the game? Gabe's probably like, can we talk about Idle Champions, please? But you know what? Like, uh, the other streams on this channel have lots of off topic stuff. I'm allowed one every now and then. <laughs> Luffy says, the thing about pirate games is realism is the direct enemy of fun. I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that at all. I have played a much more, uh, a game that, that respected the realism of, of like what you're talking about is sailing in the wind and talking and stuff. I have a game called pirates of the burning sea, which at launch had uh, a pretty solid representation of how ships work. Um, and it, it, to this day is the most uh, enjoyable combat uh, I have ever experienced, um, of, of any game of any game, like their, their large scale PVP combat and their small scale PVP combat ship to ship combat specifically most enjoyable combat experience I've ever had. Uh, and I've played a lot of MMOs. Um, yeah, you don't have to be realistic in taking six to 12 hours to run down a ship, but you but you can be realistic about uh, the wind and how uh, moving into the wind and, and with the wind affects different types of ships uh, and how you have to, you know, affect your movement and how, how you use different types of uh, shot, like, uh, you know, cannon shot to do different things. Um, like you have chain shot and grape shot and actual cannonballs. Like you can, you can, you can infuse all of these elements in and have it be a more realistic experience. Um, without it being an, an enemy of fun. I've seen, I've seen it happen. Seen it happen. Uh, and I miss it. That game still exists, but they changed a lot. Uh, and it's just not what it used to be. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Tree Tech, he tells me the upcoming game, Grand Theft Auto Champions. Uh, I, oh my God. No. Not so idle champions is what it should be. Shrality, what should I spend corrupted gems on? We went over this earlier, but I'll give you a quick TLDR. Um, not sure if I should buy the pigments or the golden epics. Some newer player, basically free to play. So um, the biggest, uh, kind of the biggest thing uh, that's going to get you power is the marvelous support pigment. As a newer player, even though you may not have a lot of champions with epics yet, uh, collecting these is going to give you the most progress once you get them. Cause this is basically triple damage to your formation per pigment per pigment. Um, so it's the most bang for your buck as it were. Um, I've bought some of the golden epics. So I feel like some of the golden epics obviously were good choices for me. It's a subjective choice. They're basically three times the cost of a pigment. Um, so, you know, you have to make good decisions there. Like I bought the one that uh, um, I bought one that affects a speed ability because I think it's that's a value that's worth it for me. Uh, I bought Dinah hairs because that uh, that supports her being uh, her mathematically overpowered ability um, when you're in her left specialization choice. So I went with that one because I know I'm going to put a lot of item levels on Dinah hair, so it's going to have value. I also picked up Carlock's because I love Carlock and I'm going to use Carlock, so I just wanted it. So you can make some subjective choices like that. Some are seriously powerful. Um, others are just, you know, because you want it. But most of the power is going to come from pigments. Everything else is just, do you want some skins that you would normally pay cash for? Because they're going to go to cash once they leave this shop. Uh, but the feats are going to end up for gems in the future anyway. It'll take like these ones that are going to be out of here in like six days should be three months after this. They should show up in the gem shop. Um, and then chests are generally not a, a great option. Chests are generally not a great option. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Headhunter Robert, did you fully enjoy Reacher Season 2? I did. Uh, I don't know when three is coming out, but I'm ready for it. Uh, right now, uh, I am all about this is the this is the first F1 weekend. Uh, if you don't know this about me, I, li I like my Formula One. Uh, so it's I've been watching. That's what we've been watching. I watched practice one. I watched practice two. I watched practice three. I watched qualifying. 
<laughs> we're gonna we're recording we got it we record it and then watch it at night so uh the race is today no spoilers please um yeah i'm all ready so my weekends now from here on out for the next i don't know nine or ten months are going to be filled with watching uh formula one uh jaded Mythwitch, which blessings do you recommend for a casual player all the ones that you can afford uh i have a guide for that i have a video there's a video tutorial where i go super deep into all the blessings uh comparatively super deep comparatively to some of my other guides you can find that on the cine games twitch uh channel i'm sure there's a command for that in chat somebody can do um but yeah the big thing is the big thing you want to you want to remember is just make sure that warnings are enabled this this box should be checked once it is if you click the button and it just buys it great if you click the button and a pop-up comes up and says are you sure then you nope right out and then you try a different one and you that's the easiest way to think about it. Um, if you do that, you can't really go wrong. Can you be a little more efficient with your spending? Sure. But if you're a casual player, you don't need to be. Just just click the button. If it says nope, don't do not do it. Say nope. Nope right out. And, and every time you finish a run, and if you get more favor, go try the buttons again. That's It's really straightforward for blessings. Yeah. Uh, Ian Sam, is there a way to see which patron variants I've not completed and a click to take you to the next one? Ooh, I don't hold on. Let's go over here. Let's go campaigns. Wait, no patrons. I would think it would be under patrons, right? Uh, let's say Strahd. Uh, no, it's showing you purchasables and then it just shows you percentages but it doesn't have a list over here. So let me go back out and go to campaigns. I don't think it's going to be here either because it's not going to show the patron versions. Yeah. So there's nothing that really shows you that in the collections. So you just have to do the, the thing that you would normally do, which is come out here, activate a patron, click through the campaigns and find out and see which ones are lit up. That's not in there. Yeah. It might be a good recommendation to give them feedback on on adding is under patrons so you can see the bear see the variants uh and more easily go and, and get them done yeah teach you crafty ones okay carlock skills which skills what are we just talking about like what why is carlock good we can just talk about why is carlock good uh okay We'll do this. We'll try to do this quickly because we haven't got a lot of time. Uh, Carlux passive is she's a patron, a champion of Zerial, so she can go in any Zerial patron stuff. So right away, you've got a primary DPS or a tank, whichever way you want to run her, for all pa for all Zerial stuff. And it's actually a big deal because the more uh, the more Zerial patron uh, patron Zerial variants you do, the stronger she gets. The stronger she gets, um, and it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Uh, I think her main buff, Fury of Avernus, starts out around like EO8 gearless with zero patron stuff done, and then ends up like in the E30s or something when you have gear and the patron stuff done. It's a big deal. Ceramorphosis is her uh, health share. Unlike her other compatriots, uh, this makes your team bigger based off the number of tadpoles, like beefier, healthier off the number of tadpoles. So super, you can build super survivable formations uh with her via tadpoles her raid was basically her damage bonus so it, it create well it, it's a buff bonus but um you know i can i'm using her as dps so even though this is a uh, fear of avernus is the damage of herself it's uh in her column and the column behind her including herself so she has a short range uh buff but i'm just buffing her with it as a dps uh so her rage buffs that fear of avernus um, whenever she attacks or is attacked, so both ways, it's great. Uh, and then when you change areas, uh, you know, you lose some of it, you lose a little bit of it and you have to build it up again. Uh, Infernal Engine, she basically lights on fire when she has a lot of rage stacks. Um, and she starts dealing bud based damage to any enemy that attacks her. So it's basically, uh, if you're, this is her tanking feature. So when things attack her, 
she just does tons of damage to them, which is why I do like to have her in the front line, um, because it can get pretty big as well. Uh, and then her specializations, uh, go into damage support or tanking. Like, what are you really doing with her? Berserker is if you're going to go, uh, DPS Berserker, um, she gets a 50% increase in damage for each rage stack she has stacking multiplicatively. Once she gets to 20 rage stacks, we like multiplicatively stacking in this house, right? Especially with a good uh, starting value. Uh, Wild Heart, uh, when she has 20 or more rage stacks, she gets uh, a 10% max health heal every second. So a self heal every second. Um, folks, look, 10% every second is 100% over 10 seconds. It's actually, I mean, that's not exactly how math works, but that's a, that's a full heal every 10 seconds. Hey, uh, Briv full heals roughly every 10 seconds too but yeah she's a little uh, squishier than briv she doesn't have the damage reduction briv has unfortunately but but this this value should be more uh, bigger uh with anything that boosts the heals too so this is great for just making a survivable frontline tank um and then wild magic is like her support one so with 20 more rage stacks she gets uh, it buffs Fury of Avernus based off the Ceramorphosis stacks. So if you want to make her uh, buff more with a full uh, party of absolute adversaries or lots of tadpoles, Wild Magic does it. Again, I tend to go DPS. I tend to go Berserker. Um, then we get down here to, uh, well, we'll talk about her ultimate effect because that actually keys into this and makes things even better. An experienced gladiator increases a fear of earnest for each Zerial patron variant you've completed and it stacks multiplicatively. That's why I said completing lots of content, very Zerial content on her is huge. It's even bigger than Crux. Crux completes, gets, uh, an increase based off the number of light of Xerixis stuff. It's completed, but the light of Xerxes is a single campaign. It's going to cap his total will cap Zerial variants are every adventure variant in the game. And as they add new campaigns, they add new variants. This number is only ever going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and then her ultimate soul coin. She enriches, she in increases her rage cap to a hundred stacks. So previously it was 50 and remember all of her rage stuff stacks multiplicatively. So you go from 50 rage stacks, multiplicatively stacking to a hundred and she doubles her infernal engine damage. That's that on hit damage that she reflects back. Um, so with her soul coin active, she just does. She destroys things. She absolutely destroys things. Uh, did I level her up on the way? I did. Okay. Uh, so right now without, uh, without her soul coin active, I'm at an E, what, I'm getting to the E 27s. I haven't fully stacked her rage either. Um, this gets into the E, like I said, into the E thirties for me easily. Um, we don't have a lot of health share because we don't have a lot of a ceramorphosis in here, but you can track like her rage stacks and see what kind of the, the modifiers are. Uh, she ends up doing infernal engine damage with a soul coin going, um, ends up doing more damage than your primary DPS, even if she's the primary DPS because of the way it, 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 it works out. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, so yeah, a lot of fun, but like you see, I've got experience glider. I've got 332 stacks. So it's an E 17 boost, uh, to fury of Avernus. So she's, she's strong. I like it a lot. And Mondo, you guys are really good. I don't have a question. Watching Gar Wars guides on YouTube is a real guide quest. Oh, that's nice. I would say the real guide quest is my guide that's uh, called a guided tour. The new player reference over on the subreddit. Uh, hold on. I, I know the command for that, right? There. Uh, you know, I would like, I would love to just be able to remove that guide because they just do something like that in game that, that directs people through stuff. But that's the one that uh, most people say is, is great. So. Uh, the Versace, yeah, which speed champion should I spend my time gate pieces on? Mars recommended Human. Yeah, a lot of people say Human. I tend to say Briv, but honestly, right now, Briv may be coming up in Festival of Fools on Wednesday. So you may just be able to get Briv in your flex slot. Phrasing. 
Um, so yeah, Human would be a, another, is the other second, is the second of the top two speed champions in the game. It's Briv and Human. So Rough Rider, what is Dynahair's speed capped at? I don't know. I haven't capped it yet. Uh, yeah, I haven't run up her numbers. Uh, hold on. Where are we at? Where am I at for her? Uh, 174 out of 2251. No, let's just slop, swap her in here. Uh, this is her. That's what, that's what makes her mop. Uh, uh, what's her speed at right now? So I only have an 88.45% chance to drop double quest items. So I haven't put much into her at all. I don't really want to until I get the golden on her. I need, I need this one. I need this one. Hold on. I need a weekend pack. Do, 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 do. I need one of these. I need one of these. Give me a hot second while I add funds to my Steam wallet. <laughs> I should have done this last night because I knew I was going to get it. The second I saw it, I was like, speed golden item? Okay. <laughs> there we go. And I get a potion of polish back. Yay. Okay, uh, Dyna here. That automatically puts her at what? 114.4% chance. And then we just need to give her a lot of item levels. She needs 1626. Uh, let's go with these first. Sort, no, 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 that's not the sort I want. I want release date sort. There we go. Uh, all of them. It's better. 386. Uh, where's my purple at? Let's do like 50 of these. Nope, nope. 50 more. I'm just watching this, this thing fill up. This bar fill up. That's what I'm looking for. There's a thousand and I'm out. I was like, where's my blues? Oh, that's slow. Let's do... Oh, no, we don't want 424. Let's do like 100. Okay, that's faster. Now we can... Oh, well, I guess I could have just used all of them. Because it was going to take all to almost get there. And I still need more! Um, Oh, it was so close. 1621. All right, now we're going to play the singles game. What are you doing? Why'd you stop? There we are. All right. 24. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hitting everything but the speed item. Everything but the speed item. Uh, there we go. 1626. All right. Now we're capped. 400% uh, chance to drop double quest items. Now, where's my feet? There's a feat for this, right? So there's Spoils of War. Is there another one down here? There is. Spoils of War. Anything else? Oh, there should just be two for Spoils of War, right? Yeah. Okay. 672. 672. So, 672% chance to drop double quest items. Let's compare that to a Human in an effective place. And you have 1381% chance to drop double quest items. Oh, that's when 690.4. Theirs is very dependent on who they're around and if, they're, if their uh, ultimate has gone off. So, yeah, so it's not a, they're not perfect numbers. Uh... But they're there. It's a pretty heavy investment, I'm not going to lie. But I don't mind it because I'm also getting the, the another heavy investment over here into this spec item. Uh, and that's going to make 
resolve of Mont Rashman uh, bigger, bigger, uh, with more stacks. There it is. Yeah, base effect of resolve and Rashman is now at 162.5, multiplicatively stacking. Yeah, so interesting, interesting champion. Uh, last couple of questions real quick. Uh, if you're trying to get some more power, you can already push to 950 issues of Rixes and Witchlight. Do I mainly focus on scales and popping chests for item levels? Is there another avenue of power I should be incorporating? So at that point, um, item levels aren't going to be a huge deal unless you're investing specifically in champions that have a mathematically overpowered ability with items, right? With item support. Like a multiplicatively stacking with pre stack modifiers on item support. Uh, your scales, like leveling up your legendary items is the most power you can get in this game at that point. So if you've got over a hundred average item levels on champions, um, like those, those mathematically scaling champions will do well with item level investments. But the biggest thing you can do for your formation is level up your legendary effects just flat out. Uh, text.et, I tried to ask for help on the Discord, but mostly got told to sit down until my Artemis was above a thousand item levels and then use that. Are you actually an outlier in the Idle Champions community and everybody else is Artemis focused? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I, not everybody else. Their people have their favorites, but most people just like to ride the Artemis train because, because people can just hand them a formation and, and they don't really have to do anything with it, right? Um, I've never liked Artemis. I don't know. He's one of those where you, you really do have to get a thousand item levels into him for him to really to really come online. And then you also have to have the champions supporting him have a lot of item levels, which means he's not he's not really great for most players. Uh, he's not good for casual players and he's not good for new players. So there are so many champions uh, that can do as good or better than Artemis if Artemis doesn't have those items. Like if I had I had over 700 item levels uh on artemis and only you know 100 a few two or 300 on other champions and when i ranked for damage and pushing power all of my champions personally like dps champions artemis was mid-tier like he couldn't compete with with others um so artemis really only becomes that top lit tier champion when uh, when he has high item levels, uh, people also like him because then it's, again, it's super easy. They can build basically one formation and then, and then effectively use it in all current patrons and in, and in a lot of, uh, trial stuff. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, he's kind of a, in a sense, he's, e he's a bit easy mode idle champions. I refer to him as a crutch, you know, like, cause you're just. You're propping yourself up on that, and then if you don't have him, what are you doing? Can you do the other content? I don't know. Hopefully. But, you know, there there's so many, there's so much more variety in Idle Champions, and you don't have to lock yourself into that. You don't have to lock yourself into that. The game isn't just about Artemis. Uh, yeah. And Loopy said, speaking of Reacher, have you read any of the books? I haven't. I haven't gotten that. I, you know, I just, I watched the movie. It wasn't good. Uh, and then I watched the TV show, the Amazon show. It was great. Uh, at some point, I'll make it to the books. All right, folks, we are out of time. Oh, Mo and Ulo, last question. If you say a champion with a thousand item levels, does that mean each item has a thousand levels? That's really the way it, it, it works, Mo and Ulo. Yeah, we're talking about uh, an average item level of a thousand because they pretty much distribute equally. But for Artemis specifically, it's his flute that needs all the item levels. Um, for more on that kind of stuff, hit up my blacksmith contract 101 guide. I go more into like priorities for putting for investing in champions and talking about item levels and stuff. Uh, we got to get out of here though. I'm, I ran a little long. Sorry, Gabe. Um, uh, there's no more streams on this channel this weekend. Uh, they will return on Tuesday, but you can come hang out with me in about an hour ish, uh, for more of my new player account. Uh, and ask more questions about all kinds of stuff. doesn't have to be new player related. Um, uh, uh, thank you all for asking questions. Thank you Gabe, for, for grabbing all the questions. Uh, this song we're going out on is for Dritz. It's the legend of the Ranger. Uh, I'm in new player mode folks. Enjoy. <laughs> Oh, 
child of the underdog Ranger of the dead Many who have known him Proud to tell his tale His purpose will not waver Shall never be years of pain and struggle, journey to.